Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear viewers, welcome to another episode of the book of Ibn Qayyim titled as The Benefits. The benefits that is really very beneficial, that it helps to fill your spirits and your souls with wisdom and knowledge. In this episode, we will be going with Ibn al-Qayyim with this title of his book, Kun Ma'Allah, Be With Allah. If people suffice themselves with worldly life, then you let you be sufficient one, be Allah the Almighty. If people are pleased with life, then you have to be pleased with Allah. If they felt intimacy or affection with their beloved ones, then let your intimacy be with Allah. If they seek or they sought to be closer to their kings, to their high people, they seek to get closer to them, to achieve thereby dignity and pride, then you should seek to get to know Allah, to worship Allah, and to give your utmost humility and worship to Allah in order to get the utmost dignity <coughs> and highness. In this respect, we do not forget to recite to you that small verse that gives the great meaning or expresses the thing we're talking about. As you find in the chapter called Iqra, read, where Allah the Almighty says, Kalla la tuti'ahu wasjud waqtarib. No, do not obey him. <coughs> that means the arrogance, the pagans. Don't obey them straight and get closer we are also told by the Prophet peace be with him that the moment you get the, the, the lowest to Allah you put your head down you prostrate to him at this very circumstance or position you are in the closest position to Allah you are the highest while you are practicing something which is the lowest thing to be done uh, in people's perspective. You are the closest to Allah. Yes, this is, the, this is the will of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be with him. The Prophet said, be with Allah and Allah will be with you. And the Prophet also narrated to us what Allah said, I am my servant. As long as we as long as he is with me. And I remember him whenever he remembers me. If he remembers me in his soul, that means secretly, I'll remember him in my soul. But if he remembers me with an assembly, with an assembly, I will remember him in an assembly which is better than his own assembly. This is how kind is Allah the Almighty. It was said that uh, there is no moment that people hear. He said, I did not know that someone hears about paradise and hell, that an hour comes to him that he does not obey Allah, remember Allah, perform the prayer or recite the Qur'an, or do anything, anything good. One person said to him, I excessively cry. He said, why? He said, when I pray, when I worship, I cry too much. He said, if you cry while you confess your sin, if you laugh while you're confessing your sin, it is better than you cry while you are still doing that evil work. So the man said to him, do you have any advice for me? 
He said, leave the life to its people as they have left the hereafter for its people. If people have left the next life for its people, leave this life for its people. Another title, where Ibn Qayyim says, The Pillars of Disbelief and How to Destroy It. How to destroy the pillars of disbelief. He said, The pillars of disbelief are four. Arrogance, enviness, anger, and lust. Four pillars of disbelief. Those are the elements, the tools of disbelief. Arrogance, enviness, anger, and lust. He said, Arrogance prevent the person from obedience. Enviness prevents the person from accepting the, the advice or giving the advice. The anger prevents the person from dealing justly. And the lust prevents the person from dedicating oneself for devotion or for worship. Then if you destroy the pillar of arrogance it will become easy for you to obey and if the pillar of enviness is destroyed it will become easy for you to accept the advice and to give the advice and if the pillar of anger is easy to is have been destroyed then it becomes easy for you to be humble and to deal justly and if the pillar of lust is destroyed, then it becomes easy for you to hold fast, to be patient, and to be abstinent, and to be decent, and to worship Allah. Ibn al-Qayyim made it a bit difficult now here. He said, the removal of the mountains from its places is easier from removing those four pillars of disbelief when those four are, are being gathered in one soul of a person. Especially when it becomes in itself a stable attribute within his soul. When they became an attribute, a character in him, a built-in character or a stable which became deeply rooted, it won't be easy. For a person to get rid of those four things. And when those things are gathered in his soul. It's not easy to do any kind of good work. And the soul will never be purified. And if he strives to do something. He won't be helped. Having these four pillars. In which he has to get rid of. To work and to strive. On getting rid of. Those are epidemics. Or any kind of epidemic. Will be born. Or the fruit. Of those four epidemics. Major epidemics. And if those four things. Are intensified. In one's heart. It will be showing him. The evil and the image of truth. And the truth in the image of the evil, and the good in the image of, um, and the good, and the image of munkar, evil thing. And the munkar, the evil, and the image of good, the guidance will be, will be in the image of misguidance to him, and the misguidance will be in the image of guidance to him. Everything is going to be mixed up. Everything is going to be relapsed. And the life will be so close to him. And the next life will be given the image as if it's very far. As Allah the Almighty said, إِنَّهُمْ يَرَوْنَهُ بَعِيدًا They see it very far. The Day of Judgment. They see it very far. وَنَرَاهُ قَرِيبًا But we see it very close. Whoever opened those 
pillars or the door of those four pillars on himself, he had already opened all doors of evil on himself. You need to block it. You, you have to know how to block your soul from those four pillars of kufr disbelief. For these things prevent the person from obedience, sincerity, repentance, submission, accepting the truth, giving advice for the Muslims, being, uh, being humble to Allah and to His creatures. And the source of those four things is his ignorance about himself. If he knew himself, if he knew his Lord by his perfect names and attributes, and he knew himself that he's imperfect, he will not be arrogant. As if he believes that he's perfect, so he finds it to be right thing for him to be arrogant because he's perfect into himself. So if he knows the perfect attributes of his Lord and the imperfect attributes of himself, he will not be arrogant, he will not get angry for his soul, for himself, and he will not be uh, envying others on a good thing that Allah giving, had given them. Because uh, uh, Enviness is a sort of, in a matter of fact, enmity to Allah. As if you hate the grace of Allah on that so-and-so servant. But Allah loved it to be for him. You hate what Allah loved. And you love what Allah hates. Allah doesn't want to remove this grace from his creature. But you want Allah, you love that Allah removes that favor from him. That is why Iblis, the devil, became the enemy of Allah. Because his kind of sin was based on, in a matter of fact, the type of the sin of the devil was based on arrogance and enviness. I am better than him. You created me from fire, but you created him from, from dust. I am better than him. And also, you should not prefer yourself, but prefer Allah Almighty over yourself. Concerning the lust, the cure of that problem of the lust is to know that Allah the Almighty has given you that lust in order to practice it on the right way. You may practice the lust which you like today, but it may be the cause of depriving you from practicing the perfect lust at the Day of Judgment. Keep Allah and the hereafter in your remembrance. You'll be preferring the hereafter over this life. And that will be the cure of those four pillars of this belief. Be with us on the next episode of the benefits. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.